everyone, and welcome to the Genesis Community Livecast. This is our Genesis Shapers recap episode for Genesis uh, for June 2021 Shapers meeting uh, titled Post Grid Blocks and Collections. For those who don't know me, my name is David Vogelpohl. I've been a proud member of the Genesis community for over eight years, and I love helping the Genesis community get better together with my friends from the Shapers. Joining me today, we have a packed group here way more than we normally have, which I think is fantastic. But joining me today, I'd like to welcome back to the Shapers Recap episodes, Carrie Dills of CarrieDills.com. Carrie, welcome. Howdy, howdy. Awesome. And of course, this person needs no introduction, the co-creator of the Genesis Framework. So many other Genesis things, I think at this point. Also like to welcome back Nathan Rice. Nathan, welcome. Hey, I've been a member of the Genesis community for... Uh... 13 years or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, for a little while, right? The very beginning. Yeah, like when OG. I'm like, back when it was just two members, just just me and Gardner. That was it. You and Brian. Mm -hmm. I like it. Very small community. It kind of reminds me yeah. of Matt and Mike on the WordPress side. Yeah, there you go. Um, and I always love it when I ask people their their WordPress origin stories and the people that like really want to impress me, they go B2 Cafe. Yeah. B2 they Cafe get a smug little smile there. Um, love it though. Uh, and also the senior, uh, senior software engineer working on Genesis products. I'd like to welcome Phil Johnston to the, to the Genesis community live cast. Phil, welcome. Hey, yo, thanks for having me. So glad to have you here. I know this episode, or this episode and recap of the meeting in particular, uh, is, is really good to have Phil here because some of the things that we're talking about here in the meeting, are things he's directly working on. So really glad to have you here, Phil, um, to have your perspective uh, on what was talked about in the meeting. Uh, the very first question we asked in the meeting is the same one we ask in every meeting, which is, can I get a show of emoji for who was able to make it today? Phil, what emoji did you choose or were you, were, did you make it live for this one? Oh no, I you did. I, I did the rocket ship emoji, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, uh, did I do a separate one? No, just the rocket ship. Yeah, you, rocket ship. Hemberger, Mike Hemberger of My Themes, Ryan Kenstra of the product and engineering team, uh, Bill Erickson of Bill Erickson fame, and Y. Bidola of Awesome Press, um, as well as other ventures there in Spain, the uh, Y, Matthew Cardenas from the product engineering team, and then of course Phil Johnson, all going with the rocket ship. Birthday cake, we have John Brown, the Y again, and Cardenas again. Um, it was my birthday a few days, I guess, before uh, this meeting. So we got some birthday cakes there. Uh, John Brown, Ryan, we already mentioned. Anita was able to show. Nick Croft um, of Genesis Explained Book. Travis Smith, Brian Gardner, uh, Nathan, the, 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 one of the first two community members. Mm -hmm. Carrie Dills, of course, and Sally Getch. Uh, Getch rhymes with sketch. I like how she has that in the parenthetical of her name so people know how to pronounce it. Do people have, do Americans have problems pronouncing rice, Nathan? I feel like, I feel like. It's, it's, it's difficult to say over the phone in lo-fi because they always, they always want to say like right or um, Bryce sometimes. And I'm like, nope. I, so I always just say rice, R-I-C-E. I just spell okay. it out because it's only four you letters. Have, you have four letters and you have to spell yours too because I have to spell mine every time. I, my wife's name, her maiden name was like, it was Yarborough. So it's like, <laughs> you have to spell the whole thing out. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very lucky. Although I got my fair share of teasing when I was a, a kid about the, you know, having a last name. Your name's a food. Know. Yeah, it's yeah. a food. So. <laughs> it's a staple yeah. food. So. Yeah. And I didn't even like rice as a kid. So I was like, I don't even like it. <laughs> it's funny the things that insult you when you're a kid that I know. don't when you're an adult. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's a food. <laughs> yeah, I remember when I was a kid that there was a toy called the Pogo Ball and they would you sing the theme song for the song for the toy, but using my last name as the name of the toy. So I love how we can relive all of our painful childhood memories here on the Genesis Community Livecast. But let's get into the WordPress stuff. Uh, first uh, uh, topical question for the group was, um, you know, do you need fresh versions of Genesis kind of blocks and custom blocks pro? Um, 
And, you know, a lot of folks didn't need it because they were actually Pro Plus customers that had ended up getting those plugins for free. So I thought that was, uh, you know, pretty cool. Obviously, we have a lot of, uh, you know, Pro Plus customers as part of the shapers there. Um, but that, that was pretty much it. Just some, uh, you know, celebratory, I guess, emoji there. Um, but the next question up was, have you tried the new post and page grid block in Genesis Blocks? If so, what feedback and suggestions do you have for improvement? Phil, do you want to share your screen and show us this post and page grid block? Sure. Yeah, and I can talk about uh, some of the some of the changes that we made too. So here we in I, these two tabs, I have the old version previous to the new release and the uh, newer version with the changes that we made in in the, in the most recent version. Um, so I can quickly show the differences between the two. Um, don't mind my demo content here. I don't have post titles on these ones, but um, it just pulls in your latest posts by default. Um, so uh, well, actually it's in page mode right now. So if normally it's in post mode by default, it pulls in your latest posts and you can order them newest to oldest. Uh, you can choose a category that you want to show. Um, uh, and that was a single category that you could pick here. Um, you couldn't pick multiple categories. So that's something that was new. You can now add multiple categories to show posts from, and you can choose the number of items that you want to show in the grid. And um, if you want to not show your latest post, you could offset it by saying one, and now your latest post isn't going to show. Maybe you show that somewhere else on the page already. So there's no need for you to re-show that post again. So you can kind of offset um, that. So this is all stuff that existed in the previous version. Um, there, there were some, some issues with it, uh, specifically if you're in page mode um, and over here. Um, you can choose pages that you want to show. And you can see I have some pages here, again, one with a couple without actual titles on them. So um, those are my untitled ones. But anyways, they all show up here in this drop down. And this works great on my local where I only have about seven posts. Um, but uh, we had a, a specific customer with, I think, 1,400 posts or maybe more, and um, I think even more categories. And so it started to really get slow for them because in order to populate this drop down list we had to pull all of the pages into the page like it had to query the database and get every single page you have and put them into this drop down menu so you'd have 900 pages listed here um, and that's not that's not a fast query to query 900 pages so um, in the new version i'm actually uh using a a, a take of their site here for this demo which they uh, let us use um here you can see that if i if i remove some of these pages um it's going to pull in my default pages again again i have some demo pages that i created here with no title um but you can see that when i click in here there's no on the right hand side there's no drop down anymore and so i have to actually start typing in order and then it goes off to the server and looks for anything with the word new and so it's only going to bring back the new things. And this still actually takes a good amount of time because there's so many posts for it to search through and to come back with. Um, so it, it, uh, it's slow here, but consider that the, um, the slowness of this was happening all the time. And now it only happens when you search. So the page is actually usable still. I, if I want to, I could still update it and see how fast it updated. Um, so it really kind of allows it to scale to a size that is so much larger. Let's see, now I've got my response back. So I have the pages that have new in them and see there's still quite a few here, but- um, I was gonna say a query on like a New York site for the word new with a lot exactly. of posts in it. Like that's gonna get I a lot of- I probably could have picked a faster one. <laughs> if you have like less posts and, and you're, you're searching for more um, kind of specific key phrases, those queries go faster. And these are just the standard WordPress queries, right? These aren't like, yeah. you know, Genesis queries or anything like that. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just using the WordPress REST API in the background, yeah. Have you- um, have you experimented with this on any sites that run technology like Elastic Press yet? Um, I, I haven't, that... no. And that would be interesting to, to see how Elastic Press would actually speed that up. Um, 
yeah, it probably would be a dramatic increase there as well. So it can work with that, which is great. Well, I think the functionality of like being able to like put in a keyword and find exactly the post that you're looking for is, is incredible. And, you know, in, I think even sites without a ton of posts, still like a drop down that shows like all your posts is still going to get like that's out right. of hand, super crazy. So right, I think that's yeah. great. Yeah, it's uh, I think it's a really massive improvement uh, there. And again, if you go to the posts mode, um, you can now pick multiple categories. So I could add, I think, oops, I spelled it wrong. Yeah, Netflix, Netflix films, you can add more like Jersey, I think was a category, Jersey. So now you can show like a combination of posts from multiple categories, whereas before you couldn't do that either. Um, is this live now? Oh wait, no, it is. Okay, my bad. Yeah, I was looking at a comment from Anita and I was getting a little confused there. Oh, okay. She writes, she writes, I made a few in DM, but it would be great if there was an option like in featured post widgets to view more from this category. So I was misinterpreting that. It looks like Anita's suggestion was like a more button on That's the board. right. Yeah, I think that uh, that was something that she mentioned um, in another Slack channel as well. Um, we had a little discussion about that. She's my hero customer for this, this block in particular. I, she has so many great ideas for it. I, mm. She definitely, uh, is, is top of my list for that one. Well, uh, Phil, thanks for showing us that. Um, sure, yeah. Let's take, gonna take a look here at some of the feedback. We had that comment from Anita around kind of a more button there, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, Carrie, what is, what is your comment here? Plus one, I won't, you're here. I don't have to read it. You, you tell me what it says. <laughs> yeah, well, this isn't necessarily in the new version. It was in the old version too, but, um, Bill, you didn't click on the part with the markup, but there's a spot mm. where you can change which heading you want. Uh, and in old, old Genesis, they were always H4 headers, right. uh, which may not have been semantically correct. And then it got updated to H3s, which was more applicable. Uh, but for accessibility and SEO, being able to change those uh, headings to be semantic in any context is, is pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we do that already, or is that something? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Oh, yes, we do. Go oh, back. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're working too fast, guys. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Slow down a little bit. Yeah. You can't even be up with yourselves here. I love it. Uh, this is great. I love like there's like these suggestions, and they're like, "Well, no, it already does that, right?" Uh, or, or it's done that recently. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, okay, let's see what John. Brown says, perhaps non question, but these will only be available through my studio press. What is he talking about on that? I think he's taking on a different topic on that one. I think uh, he's late to the thread on uh, downloading the latest versions of PB Pro and. Uh, oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. He kind of he kind of changed topics work. there. Okay, gotcha. Uh, he went and got coffee and then came back and answered late. <laughs> Yeah, well, that happens sometimes. I notice people like have those replies or typing out, and then I ask the next question, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, I meant to do that, right?" Um, but yeah, the issue that John was bringing up um, is for around Pro Plus customers who received access to Genesis Blocks Pro and Custom Blocks Pro in the Studio Press portal. Um, future updates to those plugins will also be distributed to those folks through that portal. Um, exactly like theme updates are distributed through that portal today. In the WP admin side, there's a little error message that will pop up on the plugins view. Uh, if you're using that plugin without a license key, which handles the auto updating, and um, that's the only thing that doesn't work if you don't have the license key in there is the auto updating. So Pro Plus customers will need to download updates via the portal, just like with themes. And so there were threads, you know, where people had questions around this. Um, we don't currently have, uh, you know, anything in, 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 in flight to, to, you know, kind of change how that works. Um, we have some ideas around how to make that process more palatable to Pro Plus customers. Um, but one thing to consider is that Pro Plus customers have forever accounts. Right, you signed up for an account, 
you always get access to that account and the themes. So any keys we assign um, would be in a sense forever keys. Um, unlike people that pay for Genesis Pro in an annual subscription, if they stop paying, the key stops working. Um, and so that, that's kind of the backstory behind why during launch, um, you know, and, and, and even now, of course, uh, there are no keys in those Pro Plus uh, customer versions of those plugins. So um, I thought it'd be helpful to explain that here. I don't know. Uh, it is, I think it is. Right I think it's, it's, and it's good to it's good to to not just ignore it. I mean, the fact is that th this is this is a pain point. It is something I can, I can just say that you know internally we are discussing. There are reasons why the solution that probably is like the first thing that pops in a person's head, well, we'll just do this. Like there are, I promise there are reasons why those things just don't work. Like the, that, uh, that, that it's difficult to, to achieve those at least without a, a, a huge effort on the part of the engineering team. So um, we're in active discussion right now, trying to figure out what are the best ways to actually resolve this for, for people, for pro plus customers um, without, completely derailing our engineering efforts for future development of some really cool stuff that we're going to be working on. So that's the, that's the catch 22 there, but it's, it, it is something that we're aware of. And then we're, we're trying to figure out a resolution. So. Sure. I think the other thing to acknowledge is just speed. We were able to get this done faster and get that value in pro plus customers hands quicker, uh, you know, by following this approach. So um, thanks for clarifying Nathan. Really appreciate that. Uh, next question on the agenda was, have you tried building your own collection yet, like Wes Strom uh, did? If you don't know Wes, check him out, uh, S-T-R-A-H-A-M on Twitter. He's building some cool stuff. Uh, but then we said, if so, what feedback and suggestions do you have for improvement around building your own collection? Um Let's take a look here. Carrie, you've built some custom collection, uh, just one or several? I did just one. And uh, if anybody tunes in, I'm not sure when this will be published, but I might be showing it off at uh, my summit talk next week. Oh, the WP <laughs> Engine it... Summit. I'm not even cross-plugging events. Attend well, you know, WPEngine.com. <laughs> Wonderful. One, I mean, Carrie Dills is the number one draw for the event, frankly. Uh, but there are some other wonderful presentations of people not nearly as cool as Carrie Dills. So, uh, but you're going to show off maybe a new collection? I am. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's mostly just to demonstrate how it's done. And uh, Rob Stinson wrote just an amazing tutorial over on the Studio Press blog, uh, walking through conceptually what it was and then showing the code snippets and uh, it's really a pretty straightforward process. I've sent a link to that studiopress.blog. It's titled The Ultimate Guide to Building Custom Collections in Genesis Blocks. And he has com uh, companion articles that talk about like bundling that collection into a plugin. Um, I feel like it's really approachable the way he did that documentation. Just outstanding job, I thought, from Rob there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to look forward to seeing your run down there at, at Summit, Kerry. That's going to be an exciting one. Um, looks like Nawai responded here. Um, I knew he had built a collection for two of his awesome OSOM Press themes, um, but I didn't realize he'd done it for three. So congrats to Nawai. Um, he's got some cool stuff that we're going to be, um, you know, featuring in the Studio Press Marketplace in uh, coming weeks. Um, uh, really excited about that. I think that's also another cool thing about the changes to the marketplace and not you know, selling themes for third parties directly, but rather linking to them is it makes us much easier for us to get new themes in the marketplace and, you know, kind of spread the love with Genesis product and theme makers. Um, let's see, Nawai and Sally, you, of course, Carrie, you'd already mentioned that. And then it looks like some just like general banter around that. Um, you, you were talking about using generate WP for the UI of your plugin structure? It was just, it was not any critical feedback. It was just like wish list. So if anybody hasn't used generate WP, it's basically a, a, a graphical UI for creating the code for custom post types or taxonomies or, or whatnot. And because the block uh, generating a collection is pretty straightforward, 
code wise, I was like, oh, that'd be pretty cool if you could just type in like your labels and whatever, and it would just pop oh, out the code for cool. you. I didn't fully grasp that comment. I just fired it when you said it. Sorry, Carrie, there's a <laughs> lot of sub threads. It's all uh, right. That's a good tip. I like that one. Uh, one of the things that um, I think is interesting is that uh, John Paris mentioned that, you know, he was like, hey, Phil, I think this is on Phil's radar. And it is internally our team, the uh, within here, our engineering team um, actually uses a tool that Phil built called, uh, we call it Genesis Studio. And it's it's sort of this this tool that allows you to create and package. Of course, no, we're packaging obviously for them to be included within Genesis Blocks, but create and and package up collections um, together. And it's really cool. It's, it's obviously not a consumer product. This is this is a this is a professional level product that Phil built. But um, it is something that uh, I know Phil and I have had one on one conversations about. Like, how is it possible to get this in a in a more consumable for, format so people can, you know, a whole lot. The stuff that he's built into this thing really does make the process of building and packaging collections so much easier. Uh, so it, it's something we've, we've talked about, definitely top of mind. What a tease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we love it. Like I, yeah, it's, so I, I don't know. I'll give you a quick, really quick one. It, you don't have to create a page to make a, a block you can um, pull it, pulls it straight from your files and saves it straight to your files. So you don't even need to go into a post or a page in WordPress to create a, a pattern, like a block pattern, a section or a layout. Um, you call your collection what you want to call it. You put the, the patterns in it that you want. You hit save and it puts it right into your, your files, wherever you decide your files are going to live. So um, it's pretty cool. Well, That's plus cool. one for uh, bringing that one to market. <laughs> All right. Well, I, uh, I was pretty excited about your comment, Carrie. So because we, uh, we, I was uh, just biting my tongue in there because I was like, oh, we have you didn't that. fire emoji it. You didn't thumbs up. It, so I, I don't know if you really were excited. I don't know how to use Slack. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh, I love it. All right, cool. Um, next question on the agenda here is, do you have something cool in Genesis slash WordPress you'd like to discuss in a guest post on the Studio Press blog or as part of a Genesis Community Livecast episode? Um, and after an uncomfortable amount of time, I feel, um, we finally get Mike Hemberger saying that he would like to do it, I guess, for some of the stuff he's working on at BizBuddy. But I felt like like free PR, like people would be clamoring to respond right away. But I think they were waking, waiting for someone else to break the ice was my guess. What is your opinion, Nathan? You think we have a shy crowd? I feel like we don't. No, I don't think it's that. I think that maybe they just, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe they were shy. Self-promotional here? Yeah, you know, the, the Genesis has never really been about, I mean, I, I'm sure there's more like a the inter interpreted the question is like, is there something that you would want to talk about versus like, is there something you want to promote? And I think, oh, yeah, the, totally. you know, so, I, you know, it takes some time to think of a, of a good question that's good, like good discussion generating questions. Um, but there were some good ones. I mean, obviously, like there's some things that people would want to like Gardner's working on something that's, uh, that's, you know, a little bit interesting. Uh, yeah. We got Gardner, we got Mike, and then, Mike. you know, it's funny, Anita's response here is not really per se on that, but it's kind of event-oriented in that uh, after all of the launches and changes, I would love to see another Genesis camp. And then there's 20 comment thread following yeah. it and tons of emoji around that. Um, we don't currently have a Genesis camp planned. Um, following that thread. And this, this always happens when Genesis camp comes up. And for those unfamiliar, and I forget the year, I want to say it was 2017 or so, maybe 15 or 16. Um, do you remember Nathan when, when Genesis camp was held? Yeah. I don't remember the, the year, but it was very cool. Very cool. Yeah. It was a 24 hour event. So there was a, a one hour presentation every hour for 24 hours. So that way people from all around the world can enjoy content, you know, within their own time zone. Um, you know, the 24 hour schedule is a little daunting to pull off again. So I don't know if we do that again, if we were to do this, 
Um, but that is something that we're kind of noodling on behind the scenes and seeing like what would be an approachable way um, to, to do that again. Um, before the pandemic, we had been having kind of in-person events at uh, WordCamp, you know, major WordCamps, primarily US and Europe, and then I guess Asia, before, or it would have been Asia, I guess, before they canceled it to the pandemic. Um, but we are, we are kind of noodling on that to see if there'd be an approachable way for us to do that. Um, in the meantime, we've been bringing tons of Genesis content to the WP Engine virtual events. Um, in particular, we had our Decode event. Oh, I'm wearing the t-shirt right here, actually. Uh, a few months back, tons of content there. And then we have our WP Engine Summit coming up on June 24th, uh, attend.wpengine.com. We have a session from Rob Stenson covering custom blocks, Carrie Dills covering collections, um, I'll be showcasing a bunch of Genesis stuff in our uh, innovation showcase keynote that I'm part of. Uh, and I think there's a couple of others actually, uh, but come check it out. It's free, uh, 10.wpengine.com. Oh, and we have uh, real big news about uh, local. So uh, if you're using local, uh, WordPress's favorite local development tool, uh, make sure you attend because there'll be some cool announcements around that. All right, next question. If you run a Genesis theme store, how have things been going since you started distributing Genesis for free? And I was shocked at the answers. So many of the theme authors had not been distributing Genesis for free yet. Did y'all notice that? I did. I was kind of surprised by it too, but I figure, I mean, there's probably a lot involved on their end to change their their flow and maybe they're just taking their time doing it. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got, you know, a lot to do, of course. Uh, I do know, I think it was, uh, I guess I won't mention this person by name because I think they DM me this information, but they were like, I thought I couldn't do it until uh, the date you made it free because we're, you know, third party theme authors are now distributing Genesis as part of the themes from their store, which I think is fantastic. Um, but, but she thought she couldn't do it until it was distributed for free on Studio Press, and, and it was mainly just after it was announced, that was the point. Um, and so, un uh, unfortunately for that person, they were like, well, I guess I'll do it now. Uh, but they're all excited about that. Um, is this a joke from Sally Gesh? What's an icky <laughs> funnel when it's at home? You're... <laughs> Your response of is that a dad, a dad oh, joke or a question had me rolling on the floor. I think, well, go back and explain what the icky funnel is. Yeah, the icky funnel is when a Genesis theme uh, seller on their own theme store, their own website would tell their clients, buy my theme from me. But now you got to also go buy the Genesis framework from Studio Press and like their customers would often yell at them, like, what is this bait and switch? And are you trying to steal from me? What is this? Um, and it, I just, I, I, the name I came up for it was the icky funnel. So uh, when, when, you know, participation in the studio press marketplace was no longer pegged to those theme providers, forcing their clients to come buy the framework from studio press, this was the icky funnel problem going away. I always love how you think of the audience, Carrie. Like wondering what this icky funnel may be. All right, well, let's keep rocking and rolling. Um, are you working much with the block editor on e-commerce projects? And if so, what kind of custom blocks are you making or wish were available to you? Uh, Sally thought Woo's native blocks were a little underwhelming so far. Ryan Kenster thought that was interesting. Way to contribute, Ryan. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking notes, I'm pretty sure. What about you, Phil? What have you seen cool in the world of Ecom blocks? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I had the same thought, I think. We built a, uh, a collection with e-commerce, uh, with WooCommerce specifically, and uh, used WooCommerce blocks. And I, we had a lot of the same thoughts when we were using them at the time, which was, yeah, this works, but man, there, you can do so much cooler things if you made e-commerce blocks, I think. And if, and why aren't there cooler blocks yet in WooCommerce? Um, and, um, you know, it's, I had some of the same thoughts that I think some other people had. One of them was like uh, automatic owns WooCommerce. It's kind of like 
Matt's thing to make the block editor come to fruition. Why not push it with WooCommerce with awesome e-commerce blocks? Um, I have similar thoughts too, I think. Um, well, yeah, I'm sure. Like I, I gotta, and I, I, I'm gonna invoke your own, uh, your, your own team's words here. Like, I feel like their roadmap, right? Is like, mm. as they're thinking about what to attack, uh, at least in the Woo roadmap, right? Like leaning into the block part might not be the part that has the biggest impact to the Woo right. users. Mm -hmm. It is interesting, you know, to think about it from Matt's perspective and his role in core and his role in Woo and things like that. Um, and, you know, I think the other benefit, of course, for Woo is the ecosystem around it. Um, and, and the fact that there's, you know, folks like us and others contributing blocks, you know, that help to make Woo more powerful, or at least uh, make the block editor more powerful when working with Woo. And like the things that I've seen, I thought that were the most interesting is, and it's actually from the, you know, one, one of these examples is from the spin collection, but it's the notion of like, I'm going to write about a set of products or a category of products, and maybe I want to pull in those products automatically. Uh, and, and so as I think about that, like in terms of a content marketing perspective, um, and, and you can sometimes have this issue where you're like writing a landing page or writing a blog post and you're like, oh yeah, we sell amazing t-shirts. And then on the right, you want to talk, give an example of one of your shirts but you may end up sticking in a product that gets deprecated six months from now, you know, archived or whatever. And then your old blog post has something in there that no one can buy. And so I think these are the dynamics I don't think people fully understand with e-com blocks is like, you know, what are those use cases? Why are they helpful? And then in, in, the, in the integrated sense, particularly with things like showing product lists and, and product examples is future proofing your content. Um, because I don't know how many crusty old blog articles that rank for good keywords have out of date or invalid products on them. And so I, I thought that was a, a nice like clean example of how like blocks and commerce can work together to do something cool. What are your thoughts, Nathan? Uh, I mean, uh, that we're, you know, we, when we developed the collections we used uh phil you can kind of correct me if i'm wrong here but we used either we used all core blocks genesis blocks and then i think we did use a couple of Woo woocommerce blocks correct yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you know and we're obviously we're using that in the context of building home pages um product pages things like that but yeah i, I hadn't really thought about using uh you know dropping a product purchase block into blog content, you know, and really leveraging that, that sort of that, um, uh, that content creation uh, aspect of, of, of a website to, to drive sales. That's interesting. And I've not, yeah, it, you know, it's such a critical part of e-com because when you stick an ad out there, particularly on social, you know, you're, you're telling a story. And so when you link back to a product page as the destination for the story you just told, um, that, that, that kind of can have a big disconnect. Mm -hmm. That's so, an icky funnel. It's an icky. That is such an icky funnel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to get an icky funnel hat, like Phil's hello world hat. Um, I don't know if that would get me, uh, uh, very many friends, I guess when I went out though, but, uh, but, but it's this notion of like, yeah, it's, it's icky, right? It's like you're, 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 you're using story-based marketing, but you're landing people at a very kind of outcome-based page. And so when I think of the block editor in general, um, and I, I love you, Phil, on our engineering team, but it's like, um, get those marketing, get those marketers out of your dev team's backlog jail, right? Like every landing page request doesn't have to be a dev ticket. Oh my goodness. Like, um, I, and look, I know there's some developers that love coding landing pages, but like, let's face it for a lot of them it's soul crushing work, right? They want to do something cool and unique and interesting. They don't want to build the same, you know, different kind of variants of the same page to tell a different story over and over and over. They want to kind of push the edge and do cool stuff. And your marketing team doesn't want to sit and wait for 500 landing page dev tickets to get done. And so that's what I think the fundamental value of the block editor is, is allowing those engineers to empower those marketers to move faster and leave more time for themselves mm. to do cool stuff. And so if I think about that in the e-com sense, 
you know, and I'm trying to advertise, um, I don't know, whatever electronics or, or clothing or whatever, uh, I'm going to say things on social media, like get your far, fall wardrobes at, you know, David's sweaters or something. And, you know, or I, I don't know, I might have a fall wardrobe one with a set of products and another one with something else. But like when you land on the page, I'm going to complete that story, right? The leaves are turning and snow's about to come. Mm. So buy stuff to keep you warm. I'm obviously not the leading copywriter at WP Engine, but um, uh, you know, my, my, my idea with the blocks is that by pulling in that content uh, with your commerce, um, you can tell that story, but in kind of a future-proofed and dynamic way, because you're reacting to the products in your inventory versus like putting in an image that something that may not even be around two sure. months from now. Yeah. And that's actually something that's nice about the fact that the, the WooCommerce blocks that do exist are dynamic blocks. Um, you're not hard coding a product into your blog post, like you, like you said, and um, the blocks could have been built that way where they're, it's a hard coded type of thing. And if, you, and if you're not using a Woo block, you are hard coding that into your blog post. So it is nice to have that dynamic kind of server side rendered thing that just pulls your latest product instead of hard coding a specific product. So, I mean, that's a really cool uh, description you just gave that's, um, you know, I think that's valuable to think about. So that's cool. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here today. It was awesome. I guess I'll thank you one at a time. Thank you, Carrie. My pleasure. Awesome. And Nathan, thanks again. Awesome to be here. So glad to have you here. I love it. This is your second time, Nathan. You better watch out. It's going to be a thing. Uh, Phil Johnson, welcome. Or thanks again for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Really appreciated your insights there. Uh, it was really valuable. We'd love to have you back. And of course, thanks everyone else for uh, watching today. And please stay tuned for future episodes of the Genesis Community Livecast. Again, I'm your host, David Vogelpohl. I've been a proud member of the Genesis Community for over eight years, not 13 like Nathan here. Um, but I love helping the Genesis Community get better together with my friends from the Shapers.